In the typical art classroom, we're going to have uh, flat brushes, round brushes, you might have some liner brushes. Um, I don't generally buy filbert brushes, which kind of have this rounded end, or fan brushes, which sort of, sort of spread out like a broom. Um, I stick to this in my basic art courses. So we're going to go over how we use these brushes. And I've got some acrylic paint already set up, but the parts of the brush are labeled well in this little diagram here. So you have the toe, which is the tip, the belly, which is where most of the fibers are, and we call these the bristles. The heel is where it connects to the brush. Uh, the ferrule is this metal tube that holds the hair in. This is the crimp, where it holds it onto the wooden handle. Um, we always wash our brushes in cold water because there is glue in here that holds the uh, bristles to the ferrule and hot water can sometimes um, loosen up that glue. Sometimes the glue is almost like a hot glue, so hot water um, can make everything sort of fall apart. So we always use cold water uh, when we're washing our brushes. So I have a little bit of water over here, and we've got our acrylic paint. And, um, I often see students uh, using their brushes almost like it's um, some kind of primordial weapon or something. They just sort of dip their paint in and they kind of jab or, you know, do this kind of thing without a thought to how the brush uh, actually works its best. So if you have a round brush, um, you can kind of use it like you would think of as a pencil, but you generally go in the direction of the hairs. So the hair goes this way, so the brush will work best in that direction. What I sometimes see students do is they use the brush sideways and they're wondering why they can't get a consistent line going across, that the line is somehow choppy and that's because they're using the brush wrong. So we don't go sideways with the brush, we have to keep the brush in the same direction that we wanna paint and you'll see that you get a more consistent straight line that way. You can also do this if you're gonna go around a circle. You just make the brush kind of follow behind you in doing a circle. When you run out of paint, you can dip some more in there. Now, the other thing you can do is you may, as you uh, paint, roll your brush. So that means taking it and turning it as you paint. And that way you get to use all of the paint up. If you never turn your brush, uh, then you run out of paint a little bit faster. So you can see that kind of runs out there. So if I take it and dip it, and then go ahead and do the same thing, but this time I roll my brush a little bit. You can see that the paint lasts a little bit longer. We can go back over it. Um, so we want to go in the direction of the hairs. We don't want to go sideways to the brush. Okay, Go in the direction of the hairs for better lines. Um, flat brushes are really good for filling in areas. So, you know, if you get a large flat, but you have to paint in a small area, it's kind of like using uh, a sledgehammer to do the job of a small hammer. So you wanna use it for the right size for what you're doing. So again, when we dip our paint, you'll notice that I'm only getting the bristles colored. I'm not getting the, uh, the ferrule of the brush um, you know, with any paint on it. We try and keep this part clean, and then when we clean at the end of the period, it's much easier. And then I can go ahead and use that brush. And again, I'm going in the direction of the hairs. I'm not going sideways, but you can actually with this kind of brush, and you can get a thin line if you're careful. That takes a little bit of practice to be able to do that, but you can do it. And then with the round brushes, we rolled them, with the uh, flat brushes, uh, you go ahead and flip them when you start to run out. So you flip your flats and you roll your rounds. That's the way I kind of remembered it from art school. So again, always, if you're using acrylic paint, make sure that it goes in water when you're not using it. Otherwise the acrylic can dry in there and ruin the brush. So I can have a smaller brush and then this can also fill in areas uh, fairly quickly. Um, but it'll be smaller areas for the smaller brush. This one too can go on its side to do thinner lines. So let's say I want to fill in an area 
that looks like a leaf shape. And you can practice this on your own, but I'm gonna go ahead and get my larger flat brush, get some paint on it. And I can fill this all in by using the fat part of the brush to fill in the large area. And then I can go sideways on the brush to fill in the thin area towards the tip of the leaf. So this brush is very versatile when you know how to use it. So I can get that sort of shape by twisting the brush and using the fat part to fill in and the thin part to do a point. The last brush I have is a liner brush and it is what it says it is. It's really good for drawing lines. So you go ahead and fill up the brush and this one you definitely have to kind of drag behind you in order to make a nice, thin, consistent line. And this one too, because it's a round brush, you can roll it so that you can get a nice long line and use up all of the paint. So this is a great brush for doing thin lines. Now you can do this with a regular round brush, but you'll find that a liner brush will do better for drawing uh, lines. And again, you wanna do it in the direction of the bristles so you have to turn your hand as you're turning a corner if you want it to be a nice uh, kind of line. Using this one going sideways, you're gonna get even worse results than we were getting before with the round brush, okay? So those are the three basic brushes that you're going to see in your classroom and how we use them.